And this is why, in the end, the forces of darkness and lies cannot win, because there is a common sense in the people, which is sometimes reflected even in opinion polls, however much they may try to bend the results. There's a common sense that says, nah, we're not buying this. We can see what looks like propaganda. We can see that the Worldwide Fund for Nature is spending hundreds of millions on propagandizing us, and so is, so is Al Gore, and so is Bill Gates, and all these people. And they realize that it's gone too far. So the correct policy response to the non-problem of climate change is to have the courage to do nothing. We, the people, are no longer afraid of global warming. We're fed up to the back teeth of hearing about it. We're bored by it, and the bedwetters know it. Their ever more outlandish predictions are a measure of their blind panic. The Dr. Strangelove of NASA, in the latest <laughs> of a, a series of ever more desperate attempts to flog the dead horse of climatic apocalypse, recently wrote that sea level is about to rise by 246 feet. <laughs> and anyone that disagrees with me will be arrested and put on trial for high crimes against humanity and nature. <laughs> 246 feet. Even the top floor of this hotel would be in trouble. When Hansen's political ally and financial beneficiary, Al Gore, had only predicted one-twelfth of that amount of imminent sea level rise, Mr. Justice Burton said in the London High Court, the Armageddon scenario that he depicts is not based on any scientific view. But then Al Gore knew that all along. In 2005, the year he said sea level would imminently rise by 20 feet, he bought a $4 million condo in the St. Regis Tower, San Francisco, just feet from the ocean at Fisherman's Wharf. <laughs> so the only danger to sea level is from all those bedwetters. <laughs> now, if we're going to exaggerate, let's exaggerate properly. Sea level is going to rise not by Gore's 20 feet, not by Hansen's 246 feet, but by 2,640 feet. Half a mile, you heard it here first. <laughs> oh, uh, there goes Andy Revkin to uh, ring up the New York Times and tell them to hold the front page. <laughs> All lands not submerged between, beneath the inexorably rising wa waves will bake and wither under permanent year-round drought. Yea, and the very same land will smother and drown under permanent year-round floods at the same time. And plagues of locusts, and pestilences, and famines, and brimstone, and fire, and boils, and pustules, yea, verily, and other things that pullulate and fester and sound nasty enough to get big headlines and bigger research grants. <laughs> I see now. I see now why these bedwetters exaggerate on such an outrageous scale. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Dr. Strangelove has published a peer-reviewed paper, so it must be true, saying 60% of all species will soon be flung into extinction. It won't be 60%, it will be 326%. <laughs> What do you mean we can't extinguish more than 100%? You heard President Obama, yes we can. <laughs> and how do you know we can? Because the IPCC says. Because the IPCC says. That pathetic phrase is nothing less than an instrument of political abdication on the part of what is laughingly called our leadership class. There was once an androgynous crooner who eventually ended up calling himself the artist formerly known as Prince. In Britain, Her Majesty's loyal opposition, the party formerly known as Conservative, <laughs> has stated in the person of his chief 
of policy, we cannot question what the scientists say. Well, thanks to all of you, yes, we can. <laughs> when the founding fathers of this great nation met in that hot summer long ago in the city of brotherly love to craft the noble constitution of the United States, they were building this great nation upon the solid foundation of your Declaration of Independence. Independence. This winter, if the United States signs up to the Treaty of Copenhagen, her independence and our freedom will be gone forever. If Thomas Jefferson were alive today, he would be turning in his grave. <laughs> Last year, the President of the Czech Republic told this conference it's not about climatology, it's about freedom. This year, the President of the European Union told us the same. <laughs> Two statesmen with one message. <laughs> Let me ask you this question, and it is not a rhetorical question because it's audience participation time. I want to hear your answer loud and clear. Do we want to be governed not by representatives whom we elect and hold to account and remove, but by the technocratic centralist wannabe world government of the IPCC? No! I didn't quite hear that. Do we want to pay a single red cent more of our taxes to fund the global warming boondoggle? No! Are we terrified by the spectre of sea level rising 246 feet? No! Do we expect sea level to rise this century by more than about one foot? No! Do we want to see the bedwetting liars, hucksters, shysters, fraudsters and racketeers ever more extravagantly rewarded with honours and prizes for their ever more extravagant falsehoods, fables and fictions? No! Do we want cap and trade? No! Louder! No! I said louder! No! Better. Do we need carbon taxes? Do we want to let Joe Bast get away with not organising another Heartland Conference next year? No. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> you, in this room, have bravely upheld the truth and the scientific method against all manner of lies, threats, sanctions, personal attacks, humiliating academic put-downs and entertaining revisions of your creepy media biographies. Because you have not failed or faltered, the forces of darkness are now scuttling back into their lairs, there to snivel in the eternal darkness of utter oblivion and CNN. <laughs> Divine providence, unlike the bedwetters, has a sense of humor. Governor Schwarzenegger, now there's an oxymoron for you, or as we say in Cambridge, moron for short, as soon as Governor Schwarzenegger announced that the science was settled, and how the hell would he know, two-thirds of California's citrus crop was destroyed. <laughs> Were all those oranges and lemons wiped out by drought, by forest fires, by global warming? No, by an exceptionally bitter frost.